I will start with uh, Steam32 QPIDE. You can use as well QBMX with your preferred toolchain. So within Steam32 QPIDE, I would create a new project within current workspace. So file new STM32 project. I'm selecting my microcontroller L476RG board. I press next. Name of my project will be 12 underscore tickless underscore sleep. Okay, within hardware configuration, I will start with selecting a debug interface. So, system core, sys, within debug, I'm selecting trace asynchronous SW to have two debug lines, SWD, and one single trace line, which is called single wire output SWO. I would change as well the time based source from default sysdig to timer6. This time based source is used by the HAL library. I selected it, uh, I changed it from Sysdig because Sysdig is uh, reserved for operating system. Within middlewares, I would select FreeRTOS in interface CMC's V2. Within its uh, config parameters tab, I need to enable use tickless idle, which is by default disabled. I will select uh, built-in functionality enabled, which uh, would guarantee that once I would create uh, generate the project, all of the functions supporting tickless mode would be already configured and they would use uh, sleep mode within STM32 L4 device. Then within tasks and queues tab, I would just rename existing task because we will need one task in this project. I double click on its name. I change default task into task one. Uh, I keep the priority as priority normal and uh, I change the stack size to 256 words. The entry function I will change to start task one. And that's it. We are done with uh, configuration of free RTS. There are two missing points in front of us. As we would like to use low power modes, we would need some additional timer to wake up our system from low power mode. We will use low power timer, which would be clocked by the external crystal 32 kHz, which is installed on my board. So first I need to enable this uh, low power oscillator. So I go to RCC and within low speed clock LSE, I'm selecting crystal ceramic resonator. If I have a look on the pinout, I can see that this resonator is present right now. It's visible that it's connected on my pinout. Next point would be selection and configuration of this low power timer. So I go to timers, low power timer one, and within mode, I'm selecting count, counts internal clock events. Within the configuration, I'm selecting the prescaler to divide by 32 as I would like to have 1 kHz time base. Instead of 32 kHz, I would like to have 1 kHz on input of my low power timer 1. OK, so the rest of the parameters I would keep by default. Then I need to configure the clock source for my low power timer 1. To do this, I go to clock configuration. As you can see, the complete system is still working on MSI 4 MHz, which is the default configuration. If I go down, I can see that there is, let's say, low power timer 1 clock multiplexer. By default, uh, it is sourced by peripheral clock 1, which is 4 MHz. And now uh, we will change it to LSE, which is 32 kHz. If we scroll up, we can see that our LSE crystal is already present. It's selected as we have done it with an RCC peripheral. There is one more point to be done, so I come back to pinout and configuration, and within my low power timer configuration, I go to NVIC settings, and I enable low power timer 1 global interrupt. I can keep the default priority settings. That's all for now. We need now to activate all of the components and make some code processing. So I generate the code and open main.c file.
Okay, if main.c is not open automatically, you can go to core source main.c and by double click you can open this file. Okay, now we will do some code processing to activate this tickless mode. Let's continue with main.c file. So the first thing I would like to implement is our sign of life function, so task action. I would first define this prototype within this user code begin private function prototype section. So this is a void task action. You can use any other function. I'm using ITM interface on one line as the single wire output to send simple messages from the tasks and the interrupts. I would, let's say, define this function, so just not to waste the time, I would copy paste its uh, see, header and locate it in code. This area is very good for this. So user code begin for section and uh, I would just send over ITM interface Okay, so this is our sign of life function. And then let's uh, fill the function body of our task one. To illustrate the tickless mode, we need to simulate the situation where one, let's say all of the tasks except idle task would be in a blocked or suspend state. In this case, a scheduler can enter into low power mode within idle task. So to do this within my, let's say task one entry function, I would go to the blocked state for five seconds at the beginning then I would send some sign of life after this. And I would keep this task active for uh, half a second. Additionally, to observe let's say, the current consumption on the cube monitor power. OK, so those are let's say, all modifications within main.c file. And next point would be some code modification within freertas.c file. In the next step, we will switch to freertas.c file. At the beginning, we need to make our low power timer one handler visible within this freertas.c file. So let me just copy the declaration of this handler. I will use these private variables and at extern. Uh, then we need to prepare application to enter into low power mode. Please have a look that within this freertas.c file, as we enabled uh, tickless mode, we can see two new functions, press slip processing and post slip processing. Those two functions are used to prepare our system to enter into low power mode and then to, let's say, um, prepare the system to work after low power mode. Let's focus first on this press slip processing. So to prepare our system to enter into low power mode. Please notice that both functions are defined here within, let's, let's say, as weak functions. So we can either do the code processing within this file or we can declare the same functions or define them within main.c file within our code area. I would continue with this file as it is uh, done like this within uh, the slides. Now within this press slip processing function, at the beginning we need to suspend the HAL time base by calling HAL suspend tick function. In our, let's say, example, it is timer 6, which we selected as a time base for the HAL library. So I would stop the tick timer for suspend for the HAL library. And then in the second step, we need to start low power timer one in interrupt mode using HAL low power timer underscore timeout as we would like to start it with some timeout. So it should, let's say, wake up us after some timeout. Uh, we will use interrupt, so I will select this function. Uh, the first argument is, uh, let's say, the handler. 
uh, to our low power timer. The second argument, it is the maximum possible period and we will use the maximum value for 16-bit timer, so it is 4 Fs, and the timeout itself. This timeout, it is, uh, the, so the first, uh, the second argument is in fact auto-reload register content, and the timeout, it is the value we would like to, let's say, count to. And uh, this uh, value should be taken from the argument of our let's say press lip processing and this time is calculated automatically by the by the uh, free RTOS code it is calculated based on the system clock and tick timer tick timer in meaning of uh, operating system tick timer so SysTick. it is calculated in such a way to not overflow this timer in our example the maximum expected idle time should be not more then 2 in power to 24 as SysTick is 24 bit long and it should be divided then by 4 MHz as it is our system clock. So the maximum value within this expected idle time should be 4194. In case uh, all active tasks are sent to blocked state for longer time, like in our example 5000 milliseconds, uh, we can observe intermediate wake up of the system after 4194 milliseconds and then enter into low power mode again for the remaining sleep time. It is handled automatically by freer TOS tickless mode implementation, but it is visible, it will be visible within our current measurement process. So this function has let's say three arguments, handler uh, to low power timer its maximum value, so auto reload register, and its maximum timeout specified by the tickless mode of free RTOS. And this value is calculated to not overflow the SysTick and wake up and reload it again in case uh, our timeout is longer than this maximum value. Okay, so this is, uh, this the, let's say, all operations within press slip processing. And uh, the next point would be within this file, preparation application to exit from low power mode. So uh, to prepare the code, which would be executed just after wake up from low power mode. And what we need to define here. In step one, we need to stop low power timer by calling similar function than this one, but to stop this timer, the only argument of it, is the handler to let's say our low power timer one and then we need to resume our timer six for HAL operations so HAL resume tick without any arguments after this we can compile the code and start a debug session and uh, our application should work in the following way Active task is going into blocked state for five seconds, what we've seen at the beginning. Then at this time, the idle task would be the only active task. So scheduler will send our operating system into low power mode. By default, it is a sleep mode. After, let's say, 4,194 milliseconds, more or less, we will be woken up by the system as it is, let's say, the maximum timeout possible to be to be set within the SysTick. After this we will go immediately to low power mode again for the remaining time and in total we would be five seconds in this low power timer one. Then active task will send its sign of life so it can be for example LED on or in our case SWO data send this one over the data console and then it will be active for half a second this is done by this HAL delay function. After this, it will start its second iteration of this endless loop, of its endless loop, and it will start from five seconds in a blocked state. So we will go to the idle task once again. So let's uh, verify it. Uh, we can connect, uh, let's say, all the components uh, together and uh, start the debug session. Okay, I will start with, uh, let's say, code build. So I press the hammer button. And let's check whether there are no bad surprises. 
Okay, no errors, no warnings, so we can start debug session, but uh, the board is not yet connected. So let's connect our X nucleo to our uh, nucleo board. This step you can replace by connecting the, the multimeter. If you would like to connect the multimeter, you can use JP6 uh, jumper, ADD marked, which is present uh, just on top of the micro microcontroller on the board. Then, if you are using uh, the multimeter, you need to connect, uh, let's say, both uh, cables on this jumper. I will use a uh, different connection. I would use X Nucleo LPM01 board and uh, Cube Monitor Power application. And my X Nucleo LPM01 board would be, let's say, the source uh, of the, the, the power to, to my microcontroller. So I will have the following connection. I would connect the GND uh, wire on top of the board and I would uh, use the red wire on the left uh, pin on this JP6 uh, jumper. Uh, then the same wire I would connect to the white socket. It is marked CN14 on X Nucleo LPM01. Uh, the blue, uh, sorry, the black button GND would be the uh, connected to the first pin on this white connector and the third connector uh, to the third connector I would connect the red button so the let's say the plus uh, then I need to connect both boards to USB I will use mini USB cable for my uh, Nucleo L476RG and I would need, need uh, let's say micro USB cable to connect to my X Nucleo LPM01 both boards are connected code is compiled so let's uh, start a debug session. Uh, so I would just let's say run it, clicking the back icon. Within the debugger, I would enable serial wire viewer as we are using single wire output pin, and I would set it to four megahertz. Okay. Okay, now device found a uh, target. We need to power our application. As it is powered uh, through this X Nucleo LPM01, I need to start my uh, STM32 cube monitor power. So I will do this now. So this application looks looks like this. I will just let's say shrink it a bit. Okay, uh, first I need to select the board. So in fact, the virtual COM port where it is connected. So in my case, it is COM21. I put take control. Okay, and then I can select the sampling frequency. Uh, so how often I would like to take, let's say the samples of the, the, let's say the current consumption of the board I'm supplying. Acquisition time, I would set to infinite, just not to, let's say, finish exercise earlier. I can put as well the input voltage, so the power supply voltage. I would keep, let's say, the, the, the default value and I press start acquisition. After this, we can see on the screen the current consumption of my nuclear board. So now the board is supplied, I can start once again the debug session. So I came back to the cube IDE, I start debug session once again. You can see that the debugger is connected right now. Okay, I will run this single wire viewer ITM data console. So I click on this. In case um, you do not see it, you can uh, use this quick access and put single wire viewer and select this line with the monitor icon. As I've got it already, I would use this and uh, I need to configure it. So I click on this configure trace button. I select this zero channel with an ITM stimulus port. This is my single wire output pin. And I start tracing by this, clicking on this icon. Then I press resume and I should see within this port once per, let's say five seconds one, which is our sign of life. Now let's switch to our cube monitor power application. And we can see at the moment how it is working. So let me uh, stop acquisition and comment a bit. 
we can see uh, in fact a few phases here let me start from this point at the beginning we can see that application is in some low power mode uh, so the maximum current consumption in this mode is 900 microamperes and then after more or less four seconds we've got this wake up caused by the overflow of uh, cystic just after this we are continuing let's say our low power mode so the total time it should be let's say five seconds then the task is woken up from blocked state to the run state it is sending this one over itm interface and it's waiting using hal delay uh, half a second so this is our half a second in fact more or less let me come back to this point so at the beginning there is some startup so we will not focus on this we need only this area so as you can see it's quite easy to manipulate on this uh, you just select the area and it would be automatically scaled we can see that this space is really half a second this space is half a second this one is one five seconds so we see this tickless mode is operational right now the current saving is not that much at the beginning because uh, by default uh, we are using sleep mode so let's uh, come back to the code and analyze it for a while okay after we stop uh, debug session we can observe what is uh, happening within the code uh, so the tickless mode in fact is um, programmed within port.c file so i go to middleware's third part is free or to us source and port table then gcc arm let's say cortex m4 and port.c and what we are let's say looking for here it is the function v port suppress ticks and sleep so v port soup let's see whether it will find it yes it is our main function responsible for the tickless mode please have a look that it's run only if a tickless mode is uh, within option one we just uh, selected the beginning of this part if we go below the most critical point is over here so this is real entrance into low power mode as you can see it is done by execution of wfi instruction so wait for interrupt which is calling in fact sleep mode sleep mode within cortex m devices so in our next exercise we'll try to replace it with let's say entrance into more restrictive more let's say current saving mode which is a stock mode so we will replace it with some other code but just to let you know where to find uh, the heart of this tickless mode implementation it is port.c file and the function name is vport suppress ticks and sleep so thank you for watching this video uh, we will continue tickless mode analysis with other low power modes like uh, stop one or stop two in next uh, videos thank you for watching